Hello and welcome to Sorry You Went Viral, all about the stories that people have been sharing and engaging with this week and what it's really like to go viral. I'm Tim. And I'm Hannah. And we're kicking things off uh, on this week's show with what's gone viral. And you may or may not have seen um, a somewhat controversial TikTok actor whose videos have been getting millions and millions uh, of views uh, over the last few weeks. Uh, His name's Lewis Saunderson. Uh, and he's essentially recreating what are quite traumatic or very traumatic uh, scenes that lots of people will be able to empathise with. Um, and things like saving your son from drowning or saving um, your partner when they're having an epileptic fit. Um, so things that are very, very difficult to, to view. Now, Lewis uh, claims that this is all about raising awareness and it's uh, it's all about educating people about what to do. Um, but he's, yeah, he's got a lot of people talking about this, really controversial, because if it is acting, it's arguably not that great. Um, and, um, and yeah, it's, it's not all that clear, one could argue, that it is just an act, that it is just a performance rather than actually, actually something that's quite traumatic to watch. So take a look for yourself. This is one of Lewis's videos. You know how he suffered. He suffered because of you. He suffered because of you! So one of Lewis's um, arguments in uh, defending his, his what he does, he's saying, you know, this is no different from being an actor on TV. If you're watching a TV show um, or, or a film on YouTube, I think for me, though, what's the difference is that TikTok feels a lot more personal. It's on your phone. And also, you don't know necessarily when you're flicking through what's the difference between something that's staged um, from someone on the phone to to what's real. Um, and it was, it's a bit uncomfortable to see some of the people commenting, you know, obviously being affected by some of these actual personal tragedies, commenting on this and feeling almost like they're being... Um, misused or, or bringing up all bad memories for it. I think it's also interesting to see there's been a turn of late after kind of quite a lot of controversial videos like like the drowning mm. of his son and, and mm. then of his mum uh, basically started to get into parody and people criticising him in the comments and then those videos being shared elsewhere on Twitter and people mocking him as well. Um, so whether this kind of end of the trend is coming i'm not so sure but it's just it's, it's kind of an interesting dilemma really and kind of not one you necessarily feel comfortable about watching really yeah he has uh tried to give his own explanation let's have a little listen to that now i've made it very clear on numerous occasions that i am a trained actor and that my channel is about awareness videos if i was actually wanting to convince people my content is real i wouldn't then put out explanation videos i wouldn't include in the hashtags acting that i'm an actor it's nothing different to what you see in a tv drama so uh, he claims it's all just about awareness. One wonders, though, who is asking him to raise awareness on their behalf? Like, are there any charities out there who have asked him to make these videos? One assumes not, or he probably would have said so. Um, in, in which case, it's there, there seems to be a sort of a self-serving element to it. It's not just about doing a, a you know public service good. So uh, anyway, we will see how whether more videos continue to emerge from uh, from his, from Lewis Saunderson over over the course of the next couple of weeks, and whether he continues to get kind of quite a lot of backlash to them as well probably turning up at the next christmas panto uh, <laughs> if there's any 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 chance of that um next um this story kind of captivated the internet uh, last month um about a woman who's affectionately known as crazy plain lady let's uh, have a little look i'm telling you i'm getting the fuck off and there's a reason why i'm getting the fuck off and everyone can either believe it or they cannot believe it. I don't give two fucks, but I am telling you right now, that motherfucker, that motherfucker back there is not real. 
Uh, so you can see here uh, that uh, she is being escorted off the plane after um, ranting to an unknown passenger and no one really knows the context. And we still don't actually know the context of all of this. But basically saying that motherfucker is not real, is not real. And that, that sort of, uh, let me get all the um, abbreviated, abbreviated bits right. So T-M-F-I-N-R. <laughs> the hashtag has now gone viral as well. Her, she then went on to sort of put out a sort of an apology video. Her name's Tiffany. Um, and the video got 25 million views. And she didn't even like properly explain what the, she was apologizing for. But this is her this is her apology. I want to take full accountability for my actions. They were completely unacceptable. Distressed or not, I should have been, I should have been in control of my emotions and that was not the case. My use of profanity was completely unnecessary and I want to apologize to everyone on that plane. Yeah, slightly kind of strange, um, asks more kind of questions and answers than mm. um, what I did love about the initial kind of, um, uh celebration mocking uh, of what happened is someone created a painting based on that video of um of, of tiffany saying that motherfucker ain't real and basically all in all the seats instead of passengers there were santa the Easter bunny aliens etc just <laughs> all kind of craziness um it's interesting you know uh not often do we see someone trying to kind of reclaim their their kind of place on social media after such a viral moment and controversial moment like like that um interesting her next step she posted a photos of her in her kitchen um people pointed out i think during uh, the initial kind of viral moment about her being you know an expensive kitchen in her house so i don't know whether she's decided to show it off for that purpose but she's as you can see now in the video feed, she's sitting on the floor, um, kind of posing. And it's just a little bit strange and trying to work out yeah. how this relates to her kind of crusade on mental health and forgiveness. It's just almost something like a sort of glossy magazine photo shoot. It, it just doesn't add up. And um, she's talking about like, in this that particular picture where she's in, I think it's just an AI generated <laughs> kitchen. I don't actually think it's hers. But anyway, um, uh, one moment doesn't define you, but it can define your purpose. And obviously loads of like followers or viewers have kind of like um, chimed in to say, yeah, well, her Tiffany's purpose in life is just to hold people up when they're trying to get to work and to be really, really rude using explicit language in front of children as well. And now she herself calls herself crazy plain lady as well. So it, it, you just wonder whether this is kind of some very perverse brand management that's going on here um but yeah i mean it got it certainly got everyone talking and she's she hit mainstream media as well didn't she with this with this particular story so who knows if she'll make a buck out of it or not indeed um i don't know you've seen obviously the last few weeks um been this big debate over barbie and oppenheimer have you seen uh, oppenheimer i haven't seen either yet no <laughs> i need because I've, I've been away and so yeah i need to kind of get myself once the summer's done and the sun finally goes away then i will plonk myself in a cinema or in a dark room and, and watch both of them but um but but i don't know whether i'm gonna like cover my eyes or whatever at the, at maybe the cover lewis's eyes i think if you go and watch <laughs> um this week uh, a, a woman has from america has gone viral um for this posting this tiktok but obviously my husband and I talk about everything. If we go anywhere or we go see anything, even if it's a concert, movie, um, an event, we have a game plan. We talk about things like, what if you get triggered? What if I get triggered? Really the problem isn't what if you get triggered? The problem is what if I get triggered? Because I don't want my night to be ruined by being triggered by something on a screen. So essentially um, what we did was when the scene came up, when things were happening, he literally closed his eyes and laid his head on my shoulder. Like, if this is my shoulder, like this is my shoulder, he like this. And then I would just like let him know whenever it was over. So again, not the first time we've seen TikToks being screen recorded and then posted on Twitter. Um, this Twitter user Film Gal posted this almost like a, what the hell's going on with this video? What this turns out to be um, is uh, a user on TikTok called That's Not Love, a woman called Jordan 
who uh, explains, as you can hear in the clip, about her covering her husband's eyes during the nude scenes in Oppenheimer. Sorry, that's no spoilers, I hope, for anyone listening or watching on the show. Um, what turns out is a slightly complicated and quite personal issue. Um, basically, uh, Jordan is an anti-porn activist who's been campaigning since um her husband apparently is now a recovering porn addict um and she was basically appalled to help find out that he'd ever been using porn in their 10-year relationship and she's got a kind of real zeal and campaigning element to it unfortunately these kind of personal issues which you may share within friends family or your kind of similar like groups communities kind of gets shared very publicly on TikTok. And unfortunately, this poor guy has been ridiculed and um, uh, and, and had the mickey taken out of him. On, yeah, because on we don't know him at all, no. but she's quite clearly identifiable in terms of, you know, she's, she's speaking as herself and her name is there as part of her, you know, it's clear who she is from her, from her TikTok handle and all the rest of it. So, yeah, it, it's, it, as you said, it's one of those things that, He's gone viral without actually being any part of the content or any part of the content production and delivery. Um, and so it, it's a lesson, I suppose, to everyone that when you're using social media, you don't know how that's then. You don't have the copyright on it. You 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 don't know how it's then going to be um, churned out and, and used potentially um, against you. So, yeah, I mean, she's a Christian anti-porn activist who clearly thinks she's doing um the right thing by her relationship and by her husband and by her faith um but i don't know i think she may have let him down quite considerably in this one and also just don't go to the cinema and watch a 15 plus rated film basically if you're going to have to be covering your eyes every every five minutes she said it took nothing away from the experience of the film for those who also don't want to watch any nudity or anything like that Mm. um but yeah, yeah, I just, it's a bit of a strange one. I think it's slightly backfired on her unwittingly. Um, she posted um, an explanation video uh, on this. She has actually deleted the original video, but it's too late. Uh, People screen recorded it and, and it's gone again on Twitter, elsewhere, been posted in newspapers, online papers. It's just too late. Uh, but let's have a little listen quickly to her explanation. What is exhausting is living in a world where corn is pushed on us at all ages in every type of media, everywhere you go. That is what is exhausting. Even if I was not betrayed, even if I was not with someone who had a corn addiction or who used corn, just as a human living in this world, it is fucking exhausting. Next um, on what uh, went viral um is uh, one of my favorite accounts now on twitter uh, elon musk's brought in lots of different um uh twi- changes to twitter but one of the things he's introduced has been quite popular is community notes which you uh, may see underneath a post um almost like um a clarification or rebuttal to someone's claims on twitter but my favorite new account is called community notes violating people which basically celebrates the takedowns of people's boasting or claims or ridiculous posts on Twitter uh, and just highlights where people have um, just, you know, made joke about it or clarified that it's complete nonsense. And um, the, go on. No, Elon Musk himself has been kind of like yeah. fallen victim to this community notes violating people account as well. So he posted something about removing the block button, except for DMs. Um, and someone had then posted underneath saying, actually, you can't do that. It's a, that would be in violation of the rules of uh, through Apple and Google, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so, I mean, and that tweet itself got 13 million views. So even even Elon Musk on his own X site, you know, is getting kind of like trolled and going viral as well um, for just just a result of this one element of his account. There was another one, again, a bit of a, a, a silly account that people are taking quite seriously about this supposed ex-NASA scientist who claimed the end of the world was happening, I think, on the 18th of August. Uh. Surprise, surprise, sorry, spoiler. 
Uh, he didn't. Um, but again, it's clearly is just a joke account that people are taking a bit seriously. But what I love is he posted saying, today's the day, the end of the world. And then at the end, at the bottom of, of the post is a community note saying, the world didn't end. Love it. <laughs> uh, and then also just, um, again, a bit of craziness on the story we covered earlier, the crazy plane lady, um, someone posting two images of her uh, saying this woman can be can't be the same person, and the community note saying uh, this user has digitally altered her breasts for some reason. <laughs> just, again, just making jokes of some of the stupid posts that people post on Twitter. Yeah. Um, talk about stupid things you post on Twitter. Yeah. Now, now, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna pick up and talk about one part of this, but. So everyone may have seen or read about uh, a tech entrepreneur in the States called Brian Johnson. He's 45 years old and he is currently spending millions and millions of dollars a year to try to actually reduce his biological age. So that's how old his body is rather than his actual age. And as I said, he's he's 45. So he's trying to alter his genetic makeup, essentially. And he's been documenting all of his progress, uh, doing it all online. Um, And he's been now um, massively mocked. I mean, we can probably, those who are watching the video feed, you can see that he his skin is stunning for a 45 year old he's his i think that's been the most successful element of his you know kind of youth quest so far is that um he now looks very very young his skin is now much uh is sort of i think at the age of a 20 year old or something like that 22 year old um but he's been mocked uh, in particular for tracking his penis growth or uh what's been dubbed his penis rejuvenation um efforts over to you tim <laughs> Thank you, Fanna. So, yeah, um, everyone has been mocking him uh, on this, including Elon Musk, um, who posted a sick emoji when um, seeing the post. Um, basically, yeah, as you said, he's been tracking the number of hours he has an erection at night for some reason. Again, almost again, in his quest to get um, reclaim his youth, trying to get back his virality that he had as a teenager. Um, but yeah, as you're scrolling, you don't expect people to be documenting the number of hours a night they've had an erection for. Um, am, I, am I right in thinking that he's selling the supplements as well? Yeah. He's, so he's making money out of this as well as spending millions on it. So there is a very self-serving, you know, self, yeah, sort of profit element to it for him. Indeed. I mean, look, if you're struggling for a birthday or Christmas present for Lewis, <laughs> I think the game would be perfect. For him, um, just please don't let him document it online. Um, <laughs> well, I was impressed by this guy. He's got he's got a really good thick head of hair as well. You can mm. see in one of the one of the photos that he's posted. I think he's having some sort of treatment done to his skin or whatever. Um, and I was thinking, has he just had like a hair transplant or has he just dyed his hair or something? But no, this is very much. This is not about just um, enhancing, like adding stuff into your body, like you know Botox or whatever. This is about trying to reverse. The genetic process that's happening naturally um and i could just say that lewis has a wonderful fresh head of hair in it already we don't need to say something else there that uh thankfully <laughs> not um but uh, yeah look you know it's his money he's a he's, he's millionaire billionaire yeah. from tech he can spend his money how he wants it just it's just the best use of the money. But hey, it's his money, so... You know. It is his money. And also, I just think, if it actually... He's doing it to himself. He's not using mm. someone else or no. you know, other people as, as guinea pigs in this. He's using his own body. So I kind of just think, if it um, adds something to our to, to medical science and to our knowledge of how the body functions and, and cells grow, all that sort of stuff, then great you know you never know it might lead to something genuinely useful rather than just a vanity project so watch mm, this space literally, yeah. literally a vanity project yeah <laughs> and now on what it's like to go viral uh, a, a story which has captivated the football community this week um which actually has a very happy ending yes. Uh, you may have seen this video online, particularly on Twitter, of a Norwich fan, a guy called Nathan West, um, who was interviewed by uh, a, a Norwich fan site called The Pinken, 
last Sunday ahead of the game. Uh, and uh, it was mercilessly mocked online by trolls. Um, let's have a listen to Nathan explaining to us exactly what happened. The video went online and I got some horrible messages from trolls, online trolls, about my appearance. My brother told me about th these messages and shooed me some as I did not have Twitter. I uh, I was quite sad how some people can be. Obviously awful uh, to hear Nathan describe you know, how that affected him, all those nasty comments. Mm. But then what was great to see is the Pinkin then um, stated how awful these comments were and basically rallied support for him. And there was an outpouring of support for Nathan, as he explains to us in this clip. I've read so many positive messages in my support, even from rival football fans. That is amazing. So wonderful. They have come together to support me and in and with my fundraising, donating to my fundraising page. Even rival football fans. Even some of the trolls who were horrible have apologised as they have seen what I am about and what I am doing for charity and they have donated. It's really amazing to see the outpouring of support for me after what the negativity measures. Rival football fans, football fans from abroad, all different teams. The football and world has come together. And this means that Charles will never win. So the wonderful thing is that Nathan had obviously gone viral for all the wrong reasons because of all of the, the, the horrible tweets and, 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 and the like. But now he's gone viral. His fundraising account has gone viral, which is brilliant. So he's running a half marathon um, and he's raising money for Macmillan Cancer Research. And um, he had hoped initially to raise £500 for this. That was his target. And at current, currently it's £56,000 and counting. So from all of that bad and ill will and m malicious content and everything, something really beautiful has come out of it. Um, he is a lifelong kind of like um, Norwich City fan. Um, and even some of like a lot of the players have got behind him as well and just said it takes a lot of guts to kind of to, to speak on camera. So well done you. I think he's known as Westy to amongst mm. the, the players in the club. Um, and he's also been flooded, but not just with kind words, but with England tickets and signed shirts and all this sort of stuff. But I think the best thing about it is that is the, the viral nature of the charity account, the fundraising account, as a result of all of this. And the fact that he's now, I mean, hopefully, fingers crossed, he'll uh, get all the training in and complete the half marathon. Mm -hmm. And um, and yeah, get over that finish line, knowing that he's done something really, really brilliant and beautiful from what was quite a horrible initial experience. Yeah, it was interesting to see that the trolls deleted a lot of their comments after... Mm -hmm. um, uh, they were picked up and flagged. Um, and as you said, it's great to see. And again, what a great gesture. Rather than, say, look at other people, like that the crazy plain lady who's making it about herself and trying to launch a brand, this is Nathan, who's in fact, instead, raising money and said, look, oh, can you donate to my charity uh, fundraiser instead? Uh, again, a 1,000% above his um, target. Uh, if you want to donate to Nathan or Western yeah. Tours, um, we'll put the post, the link to the um, fundraiser on our social posts. But also, uh, if you just Google Nathan West fundraiser, that's the top, ser top search result that comes up. So quick and easy way of um, finding it. But please do donate. Um, we've donated to Nathan to thank him for sending us those clips. He couldn't be with us live on the show today, but we really appreciate him sending, sending those clips in. So great job, Westy. Really, really, really proud of you. Cheers, Westy. Now time for our timeline cleanser. It's a slightly unusual one, slightly different to what we normally do. Um, Hannah, have you heard of the 80s horror film called Zapotha? I have not. 
I have not. Well, in fact, it's all made up. Uh, <laughs> it's a fantastic story. Um, let's just play you this little TikTok, um, which kicked it all off. So that TikTok was made by a, a teenager called Emily Jeffrey, um, basically saying, what if we made up this film um, called Sopotha and uh, pretend it was real and it had songs and characters and everything. And TikTok loved it. I guess the horror film community on there loved it as well, picked and ran with it. Uh, <laughs> influencers, content creators on TikTok all came up with their own ideas and memories of this make-believe film uh, and what it turns out to be is a very clever marketing ploy because Emily is all about she's produced an album full of music inspired by 80s horror films. And it's basically a very, very successful way of uh, promoting that album. Um, she admitted it um, and there's a bit of backlash, but a lot of people were just full of uh, applause and praise for her smart work for you know an 18 year old um oh. sorry go on no i just think it's genius 18 years <laughs> old you're trying to kind of like find a way of breaking through and she's obviously got quite a slightly niche genre anyway <laughs> but um yeah as you said like 8 million views on tiktok for that initial video and then there's since been a million streams on spotify presumably of her album then mm. as well and then the collaboration with netflix is is and is in the works and the album's out tonight so well yeah. done emily for having the in, the genius idea of um of of kind of like spoofing everyone <laughs> absolutely brilliant um yeah well done emily and look forward to seeing that being uh in the charts this weekend yeah. um that's it for this week's show thank you for listening or for watching uh we'll be posting the clips of highlights of the show on our socials and we'll be back next week. See you then. Bye-bye.